Welcome to Point Reyes National Seashore. Hi, I'm Bob. And I'm Rick. And we're the Robinson Twins. We're standing on Point Reyes itself, marked by this historic 130-year-old lighthouse. Point Reyes is the centerpiece of a 70,000 plus acre national seashore approximately 40 miles north of San Francisco. The word paradise gets thrown around a lot in travel literature, but this is one place that really deserves that name. It abounds in wildlife and wildflowers, beautiful scenery, cultural history, and recreational opportunities. We'll show you Point Reyes starting with the park's north district, consisting mainly of bays, beaches, cliffs, coastal grasslands, and historic dairy ranches, plus a reserve for tule elk. And then the south district, which has its share of beaches and cliffs, but also has meadows and mountain ridges with Douglas fir and pine forests. The place to begin your visit to Point Reyes is the Bear Valley Visitor Center, which is also the headquarters for the park. On your way you'll see this historic red barn and with any luck some of the bird life, like this great blue heron. At the visitor center you can pick up maps and other information and talk to rangers to get oriented and plan out your visit. This visitor center was built in a reconstructed barn next to horse pasture and has exhibits on the various natural communities of Point Reyes such as the Douglas Fir and Bishop Pine Forests of Inverness Ridge, the backbone of the park, the coastal scrub on the cliffs overlooking the ocean, the esteros, the marshes, and the surf. All those habitats support a tremendous number and variety of plants and animals. The nonprofit Point Reyes Bird Observatory, based in the southern end of the park, has counted 338 species of birds. The park also has 72 species of mammals, including raccoons, tule elk, bobcats, gray whales during their migration, and harbor seals. The visitor center also has exhibits on the Coast Miwok, who were the first residents of this area, and on the Englishman Sir Francis Drake, who probably visited this area during his around the world voyage. The variety of flowers and other plants that live here is also incredible. With only one-tenth percent of California's land area, Point Reyes has 15 percent of the state's plant species, about 750. A couple of the plants that you should know right off are poison oak, which can cause a rash even when its leaves are turning red, and the stinging nettle, whose hairs on its stems and leaves can sting you with an acid if you touch them. The visitor center is surrounded by horse pasture because the park raises patrol horses for itself and many of the national parks of the west at the Morgan Horse Ranch. Several exhibits at the ranch show the history of Morgans, which are the first truly American breed of horse. They are famous for their balanced mix of speed, strength, and endurance. The different kinds of deer at Point Reyes occasionally wander into the horse pastures, like these native mule deer, or the non-native axis deer from India, like this one, or the moose antlered fallow deer introduced from Europe. At the picnic area across from the visitor center, the earthquake trail leads to evidence of the San Andreas Fault's presence. This famous fault runs right through the Olema Valley and you cross it by hiking this trail. It was here at Point Reyes that the San Francisco earthquake of 1906 was centered. Land shifted up to 20 feet. Along this trail you'll see the historic red barn that was pushed off its foundation during the earthquake. These blue markers show the fault line leading up to a fence that this land shift separated by 16 feet. The Bear Valley Visitor Center is also a place where you can start birding, like this group. Acorn woodpeckers frequent the trees around the picnic area. And even if you don't see them, you should still easily see the evidence they leave behind, like these holes that they hammer into the bark of trees to store acorns. Acorn woodpeckers are the only colonial woodpecker species. One colony might care for tens of thousands of acorn holes. You can also see evidence of sap suckers along the nearby interpretive woodpecker trail. Notice that while acorn woodpeckers tend to make a Swiss cheese pattern out of the bark, sap suckers tend to make neat rows of holes. 
you're also likely to see California quail looking for food. Or many other kinds of birds around here. Behind the Morgan Horse Ranch, anthropologists and volunteers, including school children, have constructed a replica of a Coast Miwok village called Kuleloklo. It's a short four-tenth of a mile walk from the visitor center parking area. The Coast Miwok, the original inhabitants of the Point Reyes area, built short-term huts. And granaries out of thatched rushes and more permanent homes, sweat lodges, and ceremonial roundhouses out of bark and poles. During the warmer months, villagers would work under shade structures like these to keep cool. Every July, Kuleloklo is the site of the Big Time Festival, a traditional annual gathering of many villages and tribes. You can also learn about native crafts and skills, including the use of the pump drill for drilling holes into shells. As well as basketry. A number of vendors at the Big Time Festival have native crafts for sale. Among these are carvings of abalone shells, bone and antler carvings, and dream catchers, which are believed to have originated with the Algonquin. Now let's head out of the Bear Valley area and visit the park's north district. Just north of headquarters is the Olema Marsh. You'll want to stop here and see what kind of waterfowl are swimming around. Pierce Ranch is the northernmost place you can drive to in the National Seashore. Dairy ranching came to the Point Reyes area soon after the gold rush began. In fact, many of the early dairy ranchers here had originally journeyed to California seeking gold, but turned to ranching when the gold didn't pan out. Point Reyes was an ideal place for raising dairy cows since it has a moderate, moist climate with a long growing season. It quickly established itself as a major producer of quality dairy products. The Pierces created a small town here with the schoolhouse where children from all around the peninsula and Tamales Bay came for schooling. Besides the schoolhouse, a blacksmith's shop, milking barn, creamery, and some houses remain from that era. On the historic Pierce Ranch lands, the Park Service has established a tule elk reserve. They introduced native tule elk in 1978 after an absence of over a century. Tule elk were one of the early victims of the gold rush and were nearly gone by 1860. Today's herd of some 500 elk now has 2,600 acres of Tamales Point to roam. In August and September, the elk have their rutting season. This is the time when the bulls gather harems for breeding. Most of the bulls don't get a harem and hang out in bachelor herds where they work off their frustrations against the shrubs or in mock sparring matches against each other. During the rut, bulls challenge each other with high-pitched sounds referred to as bugling. The dominant bulls that do get harems expend a lot of energy just keeping the females collected. Besides the elk, a number of predators also roam the reserve, including coyotes. Although coyotes are known to occasionally prey on elk calves, it's never been recorded here. They wouldn't stand a chance against the hooves of an adult. Cougars also live at Point Reyes, but the Park Service has never recorded cougars interacting with tule elk. Cougars prey mostly on deer, which are abundant here. Bobcats also hunt here for smaller game.
Next to the historic Pierce Ranch is the trailhead for the Tamales Point Trail. This trail extends for 4.7 miles along the Tamales Point Peninsula. Because it's a peninsula, Tamales Point offers spectacular views of both the Pacific Ocean to the west and Tamales Bay to the east. To the southwest, you'll even be able to see the point of Point Reyes itself. The spring is an especially good time to hike to Tamales Point because of the abundance and variety of wildflowers blooming here, like this California poppy and Douglas iris. The first three miles of this trail follows the old ranch road to Lower Pierce Point Ranch and is easy to follow. You're likely to see tule elk hanging around near this site. The only thing that remains to indicate the Lower Pierce Point Ranch site is this grove of cypresses. From there the trail becomes less distinct and overgrown in places. On the west side of the Tamales Peninsula, a short distance beyond the ranch site, is this viewpoint for Bird Island, so called because of the seabirds that nest and otherwise gather here. You can see a blowhole effect in this rock outcrop to the left of Bird Island. One of the springtime botanical highlights of this trail from here on is the bush lupin that blooms in profusion. Another distinct wildflower out here is the wallflower, which seems to be particularly noticeable around the actual point of Tamales Point. From here you can look northward to Bodega Bay and eastward to the entrance to Tamales Bay. The waves have carved a rugged scene that includes this sea arch. At the foot of the point is this rock outcrop that the waves crash against and cormorants hang out on. These waves also bend around the point as they rush into Tamales Bay. During one visit we saw sea lions riding these waves like body surfers. Returning to the parking area, another trail heads west down a small valley to McClure's Beach, the northernmost beach in Point Reyes that has a trail. Like the other beaches that face toward the open ocean, McClure's Beach is not safe to swim at because of the severe currents that develop here. The trail is only about a quarter of a mile from the parking lot, but is basically all downhill to the beach. The beach is marked by these reddish sandstone formations. The creek that runs through this valley pools on the beach before it reaches the ocean and provides gulls and other coastal and shorebirds with a source of fresh water for drinking and for bathing. Thanks to the many rock outcrops at McClure's Beach, this is one of the best places to go tide pooling. California mussels and barnacles encrust the rocks where waves splash over. While barnacles can seal up and wait out low tides, other intertidal creatures like anemones prefer areas where water pools or other areas that don't leave them exposed for very long. Among the intertidal animals is this fish called a sculpin. Thanks to its sandy speckled coloration, it blends in well with the pool it frequents. If you're careful, you can also access another beach to the south around a rock outcrop at low tide. Pigeon guillemots, gulls, and other sea and shore birds frequent the sea stacks and cliffs around here. Pigeon guillemots like these nest on the cliffs of Point Reyes in the spring. It's amazing the places you can call home and you can fly. The next accessible beach south of McClure's is Kehoe Beach. The trailhead for it is a short drive south of the Tule Elk Reserve fence. The hikeable and bikeable trail is about a half a mile and follows along a marshy area on its way to an overlooking dune. 
Kehoe Beach is the northernmost section of what's called the Great Beach, or also called Point Reyes Beach. This is a 10-mile stretch of sand facing the open ocean. From May to October, several sections of this beach are closed to dogs to protect the threatened snowy plover. Continuing southward, the next trailhead is for Abbott's Lagoon. This trail covers one and a half miles through open coastal scrub and crosses an isthmus between two lagoons on its way to the beach. You might see harriers, otherwise known as marsh hawks, or black-shouldered kites flying low or hovering over the bushes looking for a meal. Bikers should chain up their bikes before crossing the bridge over the isthmus because the path goes through deep sand on the other side. The endangered brown pelican frequently glides low over water but can also dive from heights up to 60 feet and snatch fish in their long pouched bills. North Beach is the first drive up access that you'll have to the Point Reyes Beach. Since this face is open ocean, the surf can be heavy and swimming is dangerous. Farther south of Abbott's Lagoon is North Beach. In the summer and spring, barn swallows take advantage of the rafters of the restrooms to build their nests and raise their chicks. North Beach has especially scenic sand dunes near the parking area. If you wander through these dunes, then you might find a sharp contrast between the barren looking sand and some of the wildflowers that bloom here. Sections of the Point Reyes Beach north of this access are closed to dogs during the nesting season for the threatened western snowy plover. These shorebirds nest in an open, sandy depression lined with bits of beach debris and are vulnerable to dogs or unobservant hikers. Disturbance of their beach habitat is one key reason for the decline of their population, so point provide an important refuge for these small birds. Besides the heavy surf, sharks can also be a hazard here. They frequent the Point Reyes area, looking for the seals that haul out on beaches and rock outcrops. But the heavy surf can also bring in lots of interesting things for the beachcomber to investigate, like here at Point Reyes Beach South. Drake's Beach on Drake's Bay provides one of the better places to swim, since the protective reach of Point Reyes quiets the surf considerably. The turnoff for it is along the Sir Francis Drake Highway between the Point Reyes North and South Beach accesses. The Kenneth C. Patrick Visitor Center is open here on weekends and holidays. Although it's a matter of intense historical controversy, Sir Francis Drake supposedly careened his ship, the Golden Hind, just inside Drake's Estero near this beach to repair it in 1579. According to Francis Fletcher, the ship's chaplain, on June 17th, they entered, quote, a fair and good bay with a good wind to enter same, end quote. After a six-week stay, he claimed the land for Queen Elizabeth I, naming it Nova Albion, making it North America's first New England, quote, in respect of the white banks and cliffs, end quote. Then he sailed across the Pacific, eventually completing an around-the-world voyage. Over the Labor Day weekend each year, Drake's Beach hosts a sand sculpture contest. Whether the inspiration is the Harry Potter books or from somewhere else, they can be a lot of fun. And keep your eyes open for wildlife around here. This great horned owl is right in the parking lot. For a good overview of Drake's Beach and Bay, take the short hike up to the Peter Bear Overlook. The namesake for this viewpoint was the state senator who helped make Point Reyes a national seashore. When the winds are just right, the waves at Drake's Beach can break in a rather smothering way, almost like they're being tripped. This view from the beach looking out at the sheltering arm of Point Reyes shows us our next destination, Chimney Rock. You might say that the Point Reyes Peninsula is double-pointed and Chimney Rock is that second point. Chimney Rock is famous for its springtime wildflower display, which you can partake of by hiking a 1.2 mile round trip. Chimney Rock was also the base for a Coast Guard life-saving station that rescued mariners that had run afoul of Point Reyes. 
The trail out to the Chimney Rock Overlook leads through open coastal grassland that is home to many wildflowers including Douglas iris and its relative blue-eyed grass, cow parsnip, mallow, owl clover, paintbrush, pussy ears which occurs here and nowhere else, sunflowers like this mule ears, chocolate lily, and wallflower clinging to the cliff overlooking the ocean and rock formations around Chimney Rock. The sea actively erodes the rock outcrops here and has produced some scenic carvings including this sea arch. The end of the trail to Chimney Rock also provides a key viewpoint for looking across Drake's Bay and back at the White Cliffs over Drake's Beach that may have reminded Sir Francis Drake of the White Cliffs of Dover. No other point on the west coast protrudes so far out into the sea as Point Reyes. The road to the point ends at a trailhead leaving visitors with about a half mile walk to the lighthouse. The path provides excellent views, on clear days anyway, of the Point Reyes beach that we showed you earlier. And of the rocks down below. A number of superlatives apply to this 600 foot high point, some of them not pleasant ones. It is both the foggiest and windiest place on the west coast. Fog is especially common during the summer when the offshore current angles away from the coast. This brings an upwelling of cold water that condenses the relatively warm moist air that the prevailing winds bring in. The branches of trees like these cypresses can even catch enough fog to form a kind of rain called fog drip that can moisten the branches enough to support the growth of ferns. After a quick visit to the Lighthouse Visitor Center, you can descend 300 steps, the equivalent of a 30-story building, to the Point Reyes Lighthouse. Before you begin that descent, however, you might want to enjoy the view from the observation platform at the top. You might see sea ducks like these surf scoters diving for food in the open ocean. Or these common murres nesting on the cliffs below. But one of the most sought after creatures to observe here is the California gray whale. Gray whale numbers suffered during America's whaling days, but since hunting them was banned, they have made a strong comeback. So much so that they were removed from the endangered species list in early 1994, becoming the first marine mammal to achieve that feat. With a population estimated at 21,000, the California gray whale may have reached its pre-whaling numbers. Gray whales pass by the Point Reyes area during the course of their 10,000 mile migration, the longest of any mammal. The height of that migration is from January to March. These whales head south for the winter to coastal lagoons off Baja, California, where they give birth to calves and breed. In the spring, they head north to return to their feeding grounds off the coast of Alaska. They feed on small crustaceans called krill, which they strain out of the waters with their baleen plates. On your way to the Lighthouse Visitor Center, you might want to linger over this life-size painting of a gray whale to get an idea of just how big these creatures are. The Point Reyes Lighthouse is open Thursday to Monday from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and the Park Service occasionally conducts tours to explain more about the history of the light. On January 6th, 1603, the 12th day of Christmas, known as the Day of the Feast of the Three Kings, Don Sebastian Vizcano passed this point calling it La Punta de los Reyes, the Point of the Kings. Because the point protrudes so far into the ocean and is so foggy and windy, it presents a hazard to maritime navigation. The sea around the point is littered with the remains of its victims. 
In 1870, the lighthouse was built to warn mariners of the danger, but shipwrecks continued, although with less frequency. Its light originally came from four lamp wicks burning refined lard oil. When the fog rolled in, keeping the 1,000 elements of lens free of soot was a never-ending task for the early lighthouse keepers. The light was converted to electric lamps in 1939. The historic light is powered by gravity, much like an old grandfather clock. The lighthouse keepers had to crank this weight up from the floor below and would get four hours of runtime before having to crank it up well again. Perfect. The whole three-ton brasswork and crystal assembly was started turning with a simple push, which turned atop a set of bronze wheels. And its speed was governed by a clockwork mechanism using weights and wind vanes. All lighthouses have their own characteristic light interval. For point rays, the whole system was designed to flash a beam of light for one second upon a point out in the ocean every five seconds. The U.S. Coast Guard replaced the historic Point Reyes light with this automated version in 1975. On the eastern edge of the seashore's northern district is Tamales Bay. This bay was created by the northward movement of the Point Reyes Peninsula along the San Andreas Fault, which runs right through the middle of it. The bay has four public put-in points for paddlers, two on the east side and two on the west side. A couple of kayak rental businesses are located on each side of the bay as well. Tamales Bay is becoming increasingly popular with sea kayakers, especially since the Park Service opened boat and campsites on its northwest shore. Shorebirds and other water birds of many kinds frequent Tamales Bay. It's an important feeding and stopover spot for migrating waterfowl along the Pacific coast. The southernmost of the Park Service administered overnight camping beaches is Kilkenny Beach. The west side of Tamales Bay is a mix of rocky shorelines and sandy beaches. The next beach north of Kilkenny Beach is called Laird's Landing. It was here that a squatter by the name of Clayton Lewis built himself quite a spread to pursue a life of art and fishing on the bay. Lewis passed away in September 2002 and a foundation in his name is trying to convince the Park Service to convert this area into an art and educational center. Occasionally the tide brings jellyfish into Tamales Bay and washes them up on the beaches. This gives you an opportunity to see these creatures close up that you might not have otherwise. Seals and sea lions also frequent the bay. Hog Island, near the north end, is an important hauling out place for them. To protect them, the Park Service allows day use only on the west side of the island for kayakers. This is Marshall Beach, one of several beaches along the northwest shore of Tamales Bay that the Park Service has designated for boating camping. If you're curious about Marshall Beach and aren't prepared to paddle to it, you can hike to it from a trailhead off the road to Tamales Point. Like all backcountry camping sites in Point Reyes, you'll need a permit from the Bear Valley Visitor Center. Besides the short hikes that we showed you earlier, the headquarters also has the trailhead for the popular Bear Valley Trail. Horseback riders, joggers, bikers, hikers, and backpackers all use this broad trail that runs for some four miles out to the ocean at Arch Rock. It's the centerpiece of an extensive trail system through the southern district of the National Seashore. 
the park in total has over 140 miles of trails. Because much of the Southern District is designated wilderness, mountain bikers are restricted from most of the trails, but the Bear Valley Trail is one of the few where they are allowed. Trails that go directly to each of the four backcountry campgrounds are also open to mountain bikers. Log benches are spaced out along the trail for hikers to rest, like here at the trail junction with the Meadow Trail. The Bear Valley Trail crosses Bear Valley Creek several times, offering views of lush streamside vegetation. Near the midpoint of the hike to Arch Rock is Divide Meadow. This is a popular picnicking and resting spot. It also happens to be a real divide since from here on the trail follows Coast Creek. Where the Glen and Baldy trails meet the Bear Valley Trail, the Park Service has set up a bike rack for mountain bikers to secure their bikes since this is as far as they can go. From here, the Glen Trail heads toward Glen and Wildcat camps, while the Baldy Trail climbs toward the Sky Trail along Inverness Ridge. From this junction, the trail out to Arch Rock follows a section of Coast Creek whose banks are lined with moss-covered and gnarly-looking trees, suggesting they've been rooted there for uncounted years. Soon after emerging into more open country, the trail to Arch Rock and the southbound section of the Coast Trail separate. After a short hike through coastal scrub, you'll reach the top of Arch Rock. Besides providing dramatic views of sea cliffs and crashing surf, Arch Rock is also a great vantage point for observing bird life. To the north, you'll notice a sea stack offshore that is frequented by seabirds, like cormorants and common murres. Many pelagic bird species nest on the sea stacks of Point Reyes to avoid land predators. Many birds, including brown pelicans, take advantage of the updrafts along the cliffs here to soar. A number of shorebirds, like these black oyster catchers, frequently skim just over the waves. While you're out hiking, you might come upon park rangers on patrol on Morgan horses, like these atop Arch Rock. From atop Arch Rock, you can watch the waves crash into the rocks below. Toward the south, the farthest point of land you see is part of Double Point, where two points of land enclose a beach where sea lions haul out. If you follow that point to the left and look carefully, you may see a waterfall called Alamir Falls. We'll visit both this waterfall and point later when we journey to Wildcat Camp. Arch Rock gets its name from the sea arch in this point of land. But this is a special sea arch. While nearly every sea arch in the world is carved by waves alone, Arch Rock is carved by waves on one side and by Coast Creek on the other. For those willing and able to do a little bit of scrambling, you can follow Coast Creek down to the sea arch itself, and if the tide is low, then hike through the opening to a beach to the north. This also could give you a chance to get a closer look at the sea stack that the seabirds are nesting on. The closest of the four backcountry campgrounds to the Bear Valley headquarters is Sky Camp, and the shortest route to get there starts at the Sky Trailhead along Lemantor Road. In season, watch for wildflowers like lupins and berries like wild raspberries growing along the trail.
The trail follows occasionally pretty steep slopes of open meadows and Douglas fir and Bishop Pine Forest for 1.4 miles to the campground. In 1995, a fire named the Mount Vision Fire swept through this area, leaving these scarred trunks as a reminder of its passing. After a 1.4 mile hike, you'll arrive at Sky Camp. Some of the sites here overlook Drake's Bay to the north and west. Like all of the backcountry campsites at Point Reyes, each site has a table, fire grate, and storage lockers to keep your food safe from camp robbers like raccoons. These little bandits have learned that unwary backpackers can be a source of easy meals. Striped skunks are also options for backpackers' food. Besides raccoons and skunks, you're also likely to encounter cottontail rabbits. And during the warm summer months, you might also encounter some of the reptiles that make Point Reyes their home, like this gopher snake. Most of the campsites at Point Reyes are for parties of six or less, but three of the four campgrounds have at least one group site, like Sky Camp Number 2 is. Besides the amenities at each site, each campground also has outhouses and garbage cans. Thanks largely to the fees backpackers pay for their permits, the campgrounds now have a solar-powered pumping system to provide water. Sky Camp can serve as a base for day hikes. Where the trails reach open meadows of this area, you're likely to see some of the resident mule deer. A popular destination for hikers is the summit of Mount Wittenberg, the highest point in the National Seashore at 1,407 feet elevation. Another day hike possibility is to continue on the Sky Trail along Inverness Ridge and use one of the side trails to loop back. Inverness Ridge is mostly forested with Bishop Pines and Douglas firs. At times, the bird life can be quite adamant about making their own music in the trees. One of our favorite hikes out of Sky Camp is to follow the Sky Trail to its junction with the Woodward Valley Trail and follow that down to the Coast Trail. Following this route from Sky Camp, it's 3.9 miles to Coast Camp and the beach. Woodward Valley is filled with old, moss-covered trees. The growth can be so lush here that sometimes even ferns grow on these old trees. Eventually, the Woodward Valley Trail opens up to views of Lean Tor Beach to the north. As well as to views across Woodward Valley itself and to the ocean to the west and south. As the trail approaches its junction with the coast trail, the trees give way to low-growing shrubs, grasses, and herbs, giving you more open views of the land and seascape. The next backcountry campground we'll look at is Coast Camp. The nearest trailheads for it are in the Limantor Estero area. One of these trailheads is across from the Point Reyes Hostel, where you could spend the night if you're not into tent camping. On Memorial Day 2003, two of the hostel employees sighted a black bear, the first such sighting in about a hundred years. It probably returned to the north where it came from. Another trailhead is next to the nearby Clem Miller Environmental Education Center. This facility conducts classes on the natural history of the Point Reyes area. Some of those classes are part of a summer camp session for kids to really get immersed in nature. Limantor Beach has two parking lots for visitors. Besides providing access to the beach, the larger lot also gives access to much of the Limantor natural area. 
The Limantour area is biologically diverse with beach, dune, streamside, coastal scrub and prairie, and estuary habitats. The Limantour area's smaller parking lot to the left as you come in gives you a good look to the south over most of the area that the Coast Trail covers between the trailhead and Coast Camp. A non-native eucalyptus tree marks the location of Coast Camp. This second lot gives the shortest access to the beach. Limantour Beach is on Drake's Bay and provides miles of open sand for beachgoers. Besides sunning and strolling, the beach is also good for pony riding. And flying kites. Boaters of various kinds frequent the bay. And Limantour Beach is a great place for bird watching. Limantour Beach also gives backpackers and hikers access to Coast Camp. Coast Camp is one of the few backcountry campgrounds on the Pacific Coast where you can backpack along a beach to get to it. Might even try backpacking with bare feet or even in sandals. Just look for a low line of coastal bluffs with a break where the creek comes in and progressively higher cliffs beyond. You can also look for a landmark eucalyptus tree that marks the Coast Camp area. And there's also a good chance you'll see the trail that leads up to Coast Camp. While dogs are allowed on the beach, they're not allowed in the park's camps and wilderness area. Besides taking the beach, you can also reach Coast Camp by hiking the Coast Trail. Coast Camp has 14 sites, including two group sites, and is in an open grassy meadow just behind a bluff that affords some protection from ocean winds. If you're lucky, then you might see gray foxes here. They are among the most colorful fox species in North America. Coast sites 1 through 7 are situated in a brushy area near the creek. While the rest of the sites are out in the open. The Coast Trail continues south out of Coast Camp. You can also return to the beach to continue southward. You'll have a stream to cross at the far side of the bluff in front of Coast Camp. Rock outcroppings provide occasional tide pool spots, but the most dramatic of the outcrops along this stretch of coastline is Sculptured Beach. These rocky points dramatically channel the waves, which in turn have carved out several sea arches and a sea tunnel. Continuing south from here can be a problem since you have to scramble steeply down the rock and high tide can block the way. A trail leads up from Sculptured Beach and joins the Coast Trail so you can get around the obstacle. Another of the trailheads at Point Reyes is the Five Brooks Trailhead in the Olema Valley off of Highway 1. The Stewart Trail begins here and soon crosses the Olema Valley Trail. It then climbs through Pine Forest to its high point at Fir Top before descending to a junction with the Glen Trail. From here you can either head toward Glen Camp or continue down the Stewart Trail to Wildcat Camp. As you're hiking toward Glen Camp, keep an eye out for the wildlife. The 
Glen Camp is a five mile hike from the Five Brooks Trailhead. This campground is situated in a clearing in forested mountain slopes. The water supply system is powered by solar panels mounted on the campground's outhouse. The selection of 12 sites, none of which are group sites, ranges from heavily shaded under oak trees to open and grassy. The other campground you can reach by the Stewart Trail is Wildcat Camp, which is located in a clearing above a bluff overlooking Wildcat Beach. This campground is 6.7 miles from the Five Brooks Trailhead. Seven sites with three group sites accommodate campers here. Wildcat Camp is a popular destination for horseback riders in large part due to the Stewart Ranch near the Five Brooks Trailhead. Like Coast Camp, Wildcat offers ready access to a beach. Wildcat Beach also provides access to a very popular landmark for the southern end of the park that visitors make a point of visiting. A two-mile round trip from Wildcat Camp south along the beach takes you to Alamir Falls. This waterfall flows over a cliff edge and falls onto the beach to flow directly into the ocean. Just south of Alamir Falls is another prominent park landmark called Double Point. The southernmost major trailhead for hiking or backpacking in Point Reyes is the Palomarin Trailhead. It can be reached off Highway 1 by taking the Olima Bolinas Road and the Mesa Road, which dead ends at this trailhead. This trailhead will also give you the closest view of the Farallon Islands from within the National Seashore. Point Reyes and the Farallons are part of a federal marine sanctuary established in 1981 that covers about 948 square nautical miles. Some of the wildflowers you might see along this trail in the spring are beech pea, gum plant, and stone crop. If you're really lucky, then you might get the rare treat of seeing a rubber boa snake during your hike. The coast trail starts out overlooking the ocean, but soon starts winding through stream valleys, forests, and lakes. Bass Lake is the first lake along this trail from Palomarin that has a trail around it for access. Visitors sometimes swim here, although the water usually doesn't get warm. Also at this southern end of Point Reyes is the Palomarin Field Station of the Point Reyes Bird Observatory. PRBO, for short, is a scientific organization that sponsors research projects primarily in ornithology, but also in other biological sciences. Their major projects involve studies of land birds at Point Reyes and seabirds on the Farallon Islands. The Palomarin Field Station is the center for the banding of land birds at Point Reyes.
Besides banding each bird, the ornithologists and interns take a number of measurements. Seven point four grams. Catch my breath here a minute. <laughs> And once they've taken their measurements and have banded them, they release the birds back into the wild. Behind the Palomarin Field Station is a short nature trail that leads you down to a nearby stream. Whenever we're at the southern end of Point Reyes, we like to visit the Palomarin Field Station of the Point Reyes Bird Observatory and take the nature trail behind it to this narrow canyon curtained with ferns and listening to the gurgling of the creek. It's so peaceful here. At the south end of Point Reyes is another bird-oriented nature center called the Audubon Canyon Ranch. From this viewing area between mid-March to mid-July you can see why this preserve was established. It protects a canyon in which great egrets and great blue herons nest in redwood trees. Audubon Canyon Ranch actually consists of three preserves, and this one is called the Bolinas Lagoon Preserve, after the adjacent lagoon where the egrets and herons go to feed. The lagoon is a rich estuary that provides food for many species of shorebirds and wading birds, and even brown pelicans, a flock of which seems to have found a school of fish here. Harbor seals also use the lagoon as a place to haul out when the tide is low. The old ranch buildings now serve as a visitor center and facilities for docents and biologists. And barn swallows take advantage of them for nesting sites. Besides protecting the heronry in the redwoods, the Bolinas Lagoon Preserve also protects the Eileen Pearson Marsh. A boardwalk provides access for visitors to study marsh plants and animals. Behind the visitor center, a bird feeding station also gives visitors a chance to view the resident bird life up close. We love Point Reyes. Our first backpacking trip in 1976 was here and we've been back so many times since then we've lost count. We can't get enough wildflower displays, abundant animal life, dark ferny forests, crashing surf, and beautiful sunsets. Thanks for watching. Now be safe and have fun at Point Reyes National Seashore. Thank you.